hello everyone welcome to this video on video games so today we are again meeting with uh, mr dev kundalia after a long time so how are you my friend yes i'm very well what about you yeah like i am also fine currently in bangalore yes. so enjoying the weather what about you yeah same here but not as good as bangalore <laughs> So, what are you teaching today from Bangalore? See, uh, I am not actually uh, teaching anything today. I am mm -hmm. currently working on one of the projects, which is like very fascinating to me. And mm -hmm. I'll I'll be just guiding out for uh, how to use my application and what is uh, my project that currently I'm working on. So we'll discuss about that only. So actually, they today I'll be just discussing about this. my project how you can use it how you can contribute that what we are going to see right so yeah that would be very interesting to see yeah so shall we start sure sure okay so they see uh, this is my uh, one of the project that i am currently working on like uh, not uh, it i am i have been like working for this pro working on this project since last one year and currently it is on very at at very good stage right so see you can see this github repository you, you can use this url to view my project right and you can basically read the readme mm -hmm. file right mm -hmm. and you can see the website also that i have just used with github pages and uploaded it right so this is that url and you can just go to my github profile and you can view this url from over here right so basically let me tell you about my project see so this is like application uh, which you can use with like it's a jar file that you can run on your machine right so yeah. basically what is my project see it is about like ns3 network simulator see you can use this ns3 in your so network subject to learn network right to simulate various kind of yeah. networking scenarios yeah. so it's like c so it's like c c++ kind of thing where you have to write the code for simulation of various topologies right and what i what i found that like in initial stage when you start learning about ns3 like how you can simulate uh, various kind of topologies right so in early stages <laughs> for anyone it is like Uh, very hard to see and understand the code structure of NS3. Like it is like written in C and C plus plus. So you you got to understand. Mm -hmm. You need to understand about C C plus plus libraries. That's how it works. See, yeah. In initial stage to reduce that burden uh, about learning coding, I have made this project. Right. So basically, these are some of the screenshots. This is like older version. I'll I'll update about the newer version. So let mm -hmm. me just so currently let me just go to release this, right? And yeah. at any point of time, if you visit this repository, mm -hmm. if you go to this releases section, you you will find the latest label. And from this latest table, mm -hmm. if you will uh, download this zip file, you will you will find the jar file of the application, the manual. and you can find source code if you want to contribute and all that stuff right so you can note that stuff mm -hmm. so this is like current uh, snapshot of uh, my application right so this is like new or uh, older version and this is like new version so what you can mm -hmm. do over here you can directly use the gui i will also demonstrate uh, uh, the that how you can use that application but uh, i'm just uh, what you can say giving an overview so this is like snapshot you can use gui this kind of gui these are some of the tools that i'll be showcasing today so mm. by using this application you can uh, directly generate the code for the topology that you can create uh, in using gui over here so that can uh, help you a lot to understand that how to write optimal code and how to mm -hmm. learn coding very faster so this is mm. that stuff and let's just talk about some basic thing like this is code and this is a discussion page we are basically having mm. some kind of discussion also so you can ask any questions there was one person who 
ask one question is also that uh, they they want to build the dot jar file mm-hmm. so it's not setting up so like it's like active project and you can ask any kind of question right so yeah. we'll we'll talk about how to use that application so if you want to use that application just you can go to the elixir section and in the latest we'll find this kind of zip file you can just download this zip file right and let me just show it to you what what is inside that file let's just uh, go so basically what this application does is yeah it uh, allows us to create topologies with no code yeah right? yeah no code you need you don't need to write any kind of code you just yeah yeah you just go there you use gui tools to create yeah. your desired topology and you can generate the code for that topology yeah yeah just wait for a second so basically uh this all this stuff uh, other than this output file you will find inside mm-hmm. uh, 1.2.0 zip file see this is jar file just second see this is jar file and this is manual.pdf which means the actual user manual for this application right so that same mm-hmm. file is over here you can find you can see this yeah. manual file right if you are a new then you can use this manual file basically i have written all that stuff that how to navigate how to make this how to make that right so i I'll, i'll not use this yeah manual to, yeah i will not use this manual to explain i will do practical stuff yeah. if you just open this jar file and one thing you need to note that uh, you need to have a java environment if you have already existing uh, there should be a java environment in your machine if you want to run this dot jar file then you should uh, have java 7 greater than dot java, uh, java yeah. 7 like that right mm-hmm. so this is like current version current latest version for this application right so yeah. you see if you have if you have worked with nsp then you may be and you may be aware about nodes and links and devices and all that stuff right yeah. so see nodes are like any machine any hardware that that can have nic card right let's say for an example mm. node can be a cpu node can be a computer which can have yeah. nic so see if yes. you, this is node tool and if you click on this tool you can see the suggestions over here that click anywhere on the canvas this is your canvas this area is a canvas okay and you can add nodes so let's say we can add two nodes we need we, we are currently simulating we want to simulate point to point topology right so see yeah. when you click on this node you can find the index number like node number 0 and node number 1 right so we have added two nodes mm. now uh, we need to have point to point link and network configuration to uh, simulate network topology so yeah what i mean by link is link is like any kind of connection like wired connection or common bus connection or wifi connection so hmm. and network configuration means that uh, if you, you if you are aware about networking stuff so you can understand directly that ip address and subnet name right hmm. so in order to communicate you know in order uh, to have communication between these two devices two devices need to have some kind of address right yeah so let's see so first we will add a link so in order to add a link you can click over here right so this will prompt you this kind of dialog box so basically from here you can create point to point link or psml link and if you want to add wifi link then you can click on this button so you will be prompted to this dialog box and you can from here you can uh, configure a wifi link right mm-hmm. so basically let's just create first of all point to point link so this is point to point link we will we can also create psml link and see uh, here we need to install the delay let's say we want that our link should 
uh, this is all kind of simulation stuff. So we want to simulate that our link should have two milliseconds of delay. So just initialize two over here. Hmm. Then the data rate. Let's say we want our link, the data rate of our link to be one Gbps, or let's say hundred Mbps, right? Mm -hmm. And let's just call it uh, as link L1. Uh, it should be link one, right? And let's say we want yeah. to enable packet capture for this link. So we can click over this checkbox. And if you don't want, then we can mm. uh, we can put it as it is, right? So let's say we want to enable the packet capture. And let's say we can we want to make a link. So let's just click on this button. And you, you will be prompted that the link was added. And if you can see over here, you will be see the created link, uh, link one with its name, and in bracket you will see the type which is P2P. And after yeah. that, you can see all this information: two milliseconds is delay and hundred Mbps is speed. And now we need to have some kind of network configuration. So let's say, so if we click, if we just click on this button, we'll be prompted to enter a uh, network configuration. So let's say a uh, network ID. Should be 54.0.0.1, and subnet mask will be 255.0.0.0, right? So 54.0.0.0 slash 8, which is network configuration. And let's say we call it yeah. this network configuration net one. So basically, this is alias, right? Mm. So let's just click on this, and you can see the same kind of button. So you can see. Over here. Now, uh, there are different kind of tools. If you want to add Wi-Fi link, then we can use this Wi-Fi connection mm. tool. If we want to add CSM link, then we can use this tool. And if we want to view, uh, view what are the servers and clients, so basically we can click on mm. this button. Currently, there are no servers, so there will be no highlighting. So let's just add point to point. And to add point to okay. point. Link, we need to use we need to click this button which is which says p2p link tool and you can see the suggestion mm. that to create a link click on two nodes sequentially so let's say zeroth node and if you if you just click on this zeroth node you will be prompted another suggestion which says first yeah. selected now select second so let's just say first so you can see as soon as we yeah. have clicked on two nodes the link has been added and you will be prompted to choose uh, one link and one network configuration that we have made yeah. link. and you can also see the information that connection between node 0 and node 1 so this is one link mm. and this is one network configuration and let's just configure connection tool so it will <laughs> add uh, like devices so now the connection has been successful now what we need to do <laughs> We need to configure a server and a client, right? So let's say yes. first of all we configure a server. So server, in order to configure server, you can just use this button. And let's say uh, node zero is server, and on the server, or the server is receiving packets, or you can say request on port number fifty four. And let's say simulation time when the server will start, which is point uh, one second. And uptime mm. means the server will be running for 10 seconds. Yep. So let's just save this setting. And you can see that over here, overview tab, you can see server index configured node 0. And in the client index, you can see not configured yet. Right? And yeah. now, if you click on this view tool, you can see highlighting of this server. So there is it, which yeah. will highlight uh, what what nodes are serving the client. So if you if you just double click on it, then it will uh, remove the highlight. And let's just now mm. configure client. So there are some different properties of client. So basically, mm. currently my application just simulates the UDP Eco client application and UDP Eco server application. I am working on adding more flexibility but uh, for now it is just like that so basically let's yep. say node 1 is a client start time is like let's say 2 seconds at 2 seconds it will start and uptime is like let's say 9 seconds 
n mpu like uh, mpu means the packet size should be like let's say 10245 interval uh, interval means like uh, what should be the interval between two packets if the client is sending yeah, right. multiple packets multiple packets sorry so yeah the jitter right yeah yeah it, it should be jitter but uh, at uh, server side it is jitter uh, at client side it is interval yeah, yeah that would be more clear yeah so networking uh, what you can say definition yeah so let's say interval should be 2 second between two packets mm. let's say we want to send five packets or let's say three yeah. packets and just after that we can click on save settings and yeah client con client configuration is done and you can see in the overview tab over here it says client mm. index is configured mode 1 and yeah. if we just now click on this view tool you can see this is server and this is client yeah both are set up yeah so now as we have uh, configured devices and server and client so we are good to go with the user red code button so you can see this is magic button <laughs> if, yeah. if you will just click on this button and yeah before clicking on this button let me tell you one thing so there is like mm. help uh, when you create this user manual you will be redirected to this page and over here you can yeah. from here you can download the user manual right and there is this file section from this file section you can configure that where the, this uh, code will be generated and what will be the file name so yeah. by, by default what is the setting that uh, let's say you uh, our application is inside this directory on this path right so basically mm -hmm. by default this application will generate the file uh, at which it is currently located which means it is on this path so it will generate for what you can say file on this part the code mm. the file yeah. the code and it will add the a default file name which is output.txt so the default settings are like this if you just create generate code button so code will be generated at this location which is like current location at which the application is and if you just click over here output.txt file so you will be having your code ready and this is your code final code and you can directly copy and paste this inside your uh, what you can say virtual machine and you can directly execute dot slash ns3 run and the file name right yeah and let's say if you want to change settings then you can change settings also you can add file name that you want you can add the path name that you want right so it's like very septic so yeah that's all about it and also uh, you need to do uh, one thing i would like to mention is that if you just go over here on youtube and if you just search if you just search for this my name which is mil mystery then you can find this channel with 80 subscribers currently i am putting videos uh, of this application so make sure to uh, what you can say period periodically check my channel for this kind of videos i have scheduled some of the videos where i'll be discussing more on this in detail so yeah that's what just i want to say yeah that this application would be a uh, very a good tool for the network engineers who want to just not write the code and just click on the buttons and basically generate the code with just few clicks and uh, canvas yeah that would be very, really helpful yeah it will be like helpful to the students uh, to like they can quickly learn the grasp the new yeah, even for learning yeah yeah they don't need to learn coding they just can simulate from home and let's say there are, there is some expert who like spend yeah because this would be language independent they do not need to learn java to learn networking they just learn networking here exactly, exactly. 
and generate the code and uh, then run elsewhere. Yeah. That's really get great application. Nice one. Thanks. So can you tell us uh, how can someone, you know, enhance this application by contributing to this? Yeah, let, let me just show it to you. This is like yeah. my GitHub repository, right? So let's say you are coming over here and you want to contribute. So there is one thing which is like there are several branches. There are currently nine branches, right? So different. I have yeah. made different branches for different versions. And mm -hmm. uh, main branch is like current. Uh, what you can say latest. Uh, if you just uh, find the stable re release or you can say latest release of this application. Yeah. So mm. it will be like code main main branch will be having like code of that latest uh, application and yes. if you can see i'm currently working on one uh, version 1.2 point 1.3.0 1 right so this is like yeah. a current copy of code which on which i'm working so what you mm -hmm. can do if someone let's say want to contribute so they can yeah. uh, find what is the latest version that i'm currently working on you can mm. use discussion page also to find like uh, in what was an announcement that what currently on what version I'm working on and they can just yeah. like what they can do they can fork my repository or fork this yes. branch only the current version or they can fork entire uh, repository and then after yeah. you can set up environment with Intellipia and you can start uh, making like uh, understanding the code structure and for your help understanding the code structure i have what i have did is i have also mm -hmm. created oxygen page so see yep. oh, over here you can see all the packages right you can see the information about that you can see all the classes yeah. that is like java classes that i have created right and you can see all that stuff over here you can see information so it will it is it is like not hard for someone to to be yeah 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 habituated with it so yeah that's all since this is an open uh, open source project that guide uh, that you showed in the doxygen would be really helpful for uh, really helpful to understand the code structure yeah. in very less time definitely definitely yeah great so that's all about it. And yeah. you, if you have any questions, then you can directly pin your questions in the comment section. And also don't forget to check the channel of Dev Kundalia, who is also making some educational videos, right? Yeah. Yeah. Thanks.